Hey, welcome back, everybody. And guess what? You know what I'm making. We're making a real good meatloaf. Let's get it. All right, folks. Now, listen, you know, I like to go over the ingredients right here. Now, listen, what you see in front of me right here looks like a lot. It is, you know, a few ingredients involved. You know what I mean? I'm going to say this is like an intermediate type of a recipe right here. But when I say it's real good, I didn't want to say it's southern. I don't want to say it's like over the top or nothing like that. This right here is going to be a great family meal. And don't forget, the full ingredient list will be on my website. That's smoking and grilling with AB.com. And that's W I T ab.com all right so what i did was i cleared my you know my workstation off right i got my bell peppers right here i've already diced down my onions right so first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and hit bake because we want to preheat right we're gonna use 375 right we hit this start and there we have it real simple now i'm gonna go ahead and start cutting these you know my veggies down now i wanted to show you guys you see how i saved this i'm gonna show you in just one second come over here this is all good bell pepper. When I have enough of these, I use these in the recipe. You see what I'm saying? So I'm gonna cut these down, right? I cut these down about yay thick. Really, I can't really say. They're about a quarter of an inch thick, right? I'm not gonna use all of this. All right, then we do the same thing, you know, for the green, right? Since the green wasn't as tall, I cut it down this way, which doesn't make a difference. You know what I mean? The main thing is to get them diced. Now, don't forget, if you guys like this type of content, you want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. If you're not already subscribed, that way you guys will be notified anytime I drop any of these fire recipes like what you see. All right, so this is what I was talking about. I saved the bottom. That's the bottom, and this is the top, right? I saved these because this is perfectly good bell pepper. So after you get a couple of these, then when you see the recipe that says bring bell pepper, you might have enough of this already to just cut down and, you know, do your thing. I'm going to put this in my refrigerator. You know what I mean? And then we finna move on. All right, so now I put a little medium flame underneath the bottom of this. You guys can use butter or uh, what I'm using is in the olive oil. Listen, this is an infused olive oil. This time I went with just full scallion. I usually use scallion or I use uh, garlic infused. You know, either one of those. But right now I just put this in here. Let me build up a little heat. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our onions and then our bell peppers. We just wanna get them like translucent. All right, this is hot enough. Now we just go ahead and start with our onions. Now you guys can put them in all together, that's fine. But for me, something about the onion, it tells me that it needs to just go a little bit further. You know what I mean? So I start there. All right, so onions get about a 60 second head start, right? Now I'm gonna come with my bell peppers. Now we're on our way to being translucent. They starting to soften up. I like the feel of these right now. Actually, just as a little tip, if you guys are paying attention, paying attention to you know what you're doing, as you're moving this around, you can just feel on top of your veggies, you know what I mean, that it's starting to soften up. It's just a different feel to it. Yes, yes, that's what we want, right? So I'm gonna let this go maybe for about another one, maybe about another minute. Try to get everything down, concentrate it towards the heat, right? Not stir it, nothing else right now. After one more minute, then we're gonna go ahead and put our garlic in. Now, once it looks like this, remember, we wanna be translucent, soft, and all of that. I'm adding my minced garlic. I put it on top so I don't have to worry about burning. Now I'm gonna look at my fire, make sure I'm still at medium, which I am. And now we just go ahead and give this a, a whirl. Now listen, when we moving this around and that heat hits it, listen, it's gonna kick back some aromatics that's just gonna make everybody in your household, you know, extremely happy because they know something is happening. So now I'm gonna turn my fire off right now, right? We just move this around, let it absorb some of that Actually, oh, I forgot to tell you guys, you guys didn't see this, I added a little bit of butter to it. You know what I mean? Just put a quarter, I mean, a tablespoon of butter in here also. If you guys are watching your uh, salt intake, you guys can use, you know, uh, unsalted butter. I went ahead and did a, a salted butter. You know what I mean? Turned everything off. Look at this right here. Mm, I wish you guys can smell it. Now, this is hot. In the past, I have put this on top of, but just somebody that's uh, very, very familiar with the kitchen, I'll just say the chef, a chef, told me it'd be nice to let this cool down just a little bit before I add this, you know, to my meat, right? The reason being, if I put that in there hot, it's gonna actually start a little bit of a cooking process. You know what I mean? So we're gonna let this cool. Let me get a bowl, take this out, and then we move over to the next step. All right, so notice what I did. Now, remember I had all my ingredients lined up? Listen, now I grab my crackers and I got my milk, right? 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our milk in here. But I'm gonna go ahead and just break these up. In actuality, you ain't gotta do this because once we put this milk in here, it's gonna get nice and soft anyway. So what we wanna do is just put this in here. I'm gonna set this off to the side. Usually takes about five, six minutes, you know what I mean, for this to like thicken up the way I want it to be. This right here, you guys gonna like this little step right here, right? So, go in here, add this. Right? Now I'm gonna just come here, just mix this up, and we are gonna let the crackers just go ahead and absorb, you know, the milk, right? Notice what I did, I pulled everything up here that's getting ready to go in here on the meat, right? And then for you guys wanna know what it looked like, once you get everything, you know, once your crackers have absorbed all of the milk, this is what you get. This is gonna help with the binding and all of that too. And give it just a, I'm gonna so I'm gonna wait, let you guys make it, and then it's gonna be fire, folks. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my, that'll be my eggs, right? And then the rest of these ingredients that you see I have right here, let me make sure I clean my hands off with that egg. Everything just goes in here on the inside. I didn't measure out my black, you know, my uh, black pepper. I'm gonna put about a t tablespoon in here all together. You know what I mean? So you just wanna start adding all your ingredients to it. So once we got everything in here, you know, this is just all your ingredients. You gotta get in there and you gotta work this with your hands, folks. There's no other way I'm gonna be able to tell you guys how to do it. So that mean that egg that's in there, you know what I mean? We gotta get in there. And then we don't wanna overwork it, you know what I mean? So we just wanna make sure that we get everything incorporated. You'll be able to see it by just looking at the uh, ground beef, you know what I mean? But the main thing is you don't wanna just compact it. I kinda like just fold it over, keep doing that, making sure that egg gets everywhere. You know what I mean? Because that's going to bring us some of that moisture and all of that. Now, once I got it halfway, I'm about halfway done, right? What I want to do is, it's going to get a little messy, but I just want to add, you know, my mixture. This is my milk and my cracker mixture, right? Now we have that in there. Now we start to work that in also. Now once we got that worked in, the other half of the other will be good, right? It should be nice, moist. Look at that right there. Once we put this in the oven, folks, when I tell you it's gonna be good, I mean really, really good. We got it like that. Last but not least, our veggies. Now you guys can put it all in there. I like to do it in these stages right here. I can tell you this way, we don't have no failure. We get complete success. Look at that right there. Remember all those flavors that we put together and how they cook together? Even the, the butter and the scallion, you know, olive oil, all of that, ah oh, yeah. Now look at it. Now remember, we don't wanna overwork it. Okay, now once you have everything combined like, you, like I have, as you guys can see right here, right? Remember, we don't wanna just overwork this. We don't want nothing to be too, if it becomes too dense, you know what I mean, uh, it just be no bueno. It'll be dense when you uh, taste it, you hit it with the fork, we want it to still be moist and all of that, right? So, what I have right here is a baking sheet. I got a rubber, you know, one of these mats on here. Listen, those who are doing dishes, you guys will love these, because listen, nothing sticks to this. You guys can put cookies on here, all that. You can see that this has been with me for a few years, and it's, you can just see it's got its battle scars on it, right? And it's gonna be perfect for us to make. Check it out, this meatloaf. Now, what we're gonna do is we finna shape this. Now, if you guys got a meatloaf pan, that'll be good too. You know what I mean? But for me, I'm gonna go ahead and just get it like this, right? And we just wanna form this into the shape of how we wanna cut this, right? It's real simple. I do have a meatloaf pan. I'm gonna make another Cajun version of this. You know what I mean? Uh, but that'll be later on, you know, in you know this year. I'll do it before the holiday, I think. You know what I mean? Uh, but this is how I like to get it. Nice and smooth. I like to see my veggies on top. Don't forget we we saute those and got those right. Just look at this right now. Real easy to do. You know what I mean? Uh, I say intermediate because there's a lot of steps. You know what I mean? Uh, but really, this is to me, is like a beginner's recipe. You, these are what you call confidence builders. Right? So you see that right there? Ah, yeah. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and make our topping. 
right? This is where we're gonna get our sweetness from. We're gonna get a little bit of, just a little bit of heat from this chili sauce right here, but we're gonna use half of it on top, put that in the oven, and then the other half when it gets done, right? So I'm gonna get my chili sauce. Notice I got a spatula right here because I want to get all of this in here. You guys look at that, it almost look like marmalade, huh? Gee, this stuff right here is good. If y'all don't have this, listen, please run out and get some. You need to have this, it makes a great different sauce. Things like of that nature, right? Now I'm getting ready to come with my, look how moist that is. Oh yeah, nothing like having fresh brown sugar. Look at that, Ooh wee. Then I'm gonna come with my ketchup. That's a lot of things you can do with this. I want you guys to let me know down in the comment section below, what would you do? You know what I mean, uh, to do something. You see these ingredients, but I like to have everything to start out, especially when it comes to meatloaf. You gotta have that ketchup base. You know what I mean? It's nothing like that flavor, all right? And last, get yourself a whisk, and then we wanna incorporate it all together. Chili sauce, brown sugar, and the ketchup. All right, so we mixed up, we good here, right? Now, we wanna go ahead and coat this. So I'm gonna probably try to use at least half of this on the top. Let me go ahead and get this so you guys can see it you know, a little better. All right, so I got my brush here. Just come over here to the top. Let's just go ahead and get some of this on here first. And what we wanna do is we wanna bake this, this on here, All right? But you guys can just see how it's coming. Mm-hmm, hey, and then I don't know how, you know everybody brain works. I don't know what these flavors taste like, you know, just individually, but the combination of these together when I tell you it's fire, that's exactly what I mean, folks, fire. Okay, so as you guys can see, when you look at that right there, you should have a masterpiece right now, right? But we wanna put this in the oven. Now, typically it takes about an hour for it to be ready, right? So by using that general thumb, and then we are gonna check it with a meat thermometer. Let me move my trash can. I'm gonna stick this in the oven. We already preheated to 375, right? But we are gonna set a timer for 30 minutes. Why? Because we wanna bake this on the top, and then we are gonna bring it out, put some more back in there, and then finish it up for the remainder. All right, so let's put this in here like that. Close this up. Now we set a timer, 30 minutes. See you in a minute. Okay, so if you guys see any like little cracks in it, that's because I didn't like compact it now. I'm telling you this is for to be juicy. Now all you want to do is just go ahead and take some of your sauce, add that on nice and thick. And then you're going to need a meat thermometer because at the end of an hour, we want to check to make sure that center is at least 165. With that being said, look at that right there. Let your eyes feast. And then we go back into the oven for the remainder of 30 minutes. Okay, so look, we done took it out of the oven. It, said it was at 168, you know what I mean? So when I stick this in here, this is what you guys are gonna wanna have right now. You know what I mean, uh, 167. It's starting to cool, but it's gonna take a minute. Now, when you have something as moist as this is right here, you know what I mean, uh, you wanna let this rest, right? So, and you want it to stay firm. That way when you cut these, so I'm gonna say you wanna let this rest for at least about 25 minutes, you know what I mean? Uh, that's just my own personal. Now, to be honest with you, listen, I already got some uh, potatoes. I made me some mashed potatoes and I got me some uh, green beans. So listen, you like to serve everything hot, right? So a 10 minute rest for you guys, you know what I mean? Then carefully, just go ahead and cut this and then you lay your slices on there. And don't forget, if you guys are uh, lucky enough to have some leftovers, don't forget about that meat loaf sandwich. Now, I'm gonna let this sit up, but before I do, I'm gonna add some of this to it. Oh my goodness. Mm. Okay, so look, you guys can look. If you look and take a look at this right here, I cut myself three slices, you know, off of it. And I promise you it didn't last as long as I thought it would, but at least I got myself a plate out of this. If you guys wanna make something like this super moist, listen, I'm not finna over talk it or nothing like that. I'm just finna hit y'all with this. Cheers, y'all. Ooh wee, oh man, moist. You know what I mean? I like to get a little, I don't know how y'all do it. You know what I mean? But I gotta get a little bit of that mashed potato on there too. You know what I mean? So cheers, y'all. Mm. You wanna talk about something that ties it all together? It's really this sauce that's on the top. This is the definition of sweet and savory with just a hint, you know, with a little bit of heat. Now, once you guys try this, let me know what you think, and then tell me what would you do to add to this, if add anything to it, to make it better or to make it your own. Now, meatloaf, we got the sauce, 
You talk to me down at the bottom, and I'm telling you this right here is fire. Now, listen, if you're new to my channel, let me take this time to say thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button, and tell everybody out there. There's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. And you know what I'm about to do, folks. I'm about to have an early dinner. And guess what? I'm out. Peace.